is a really interesting set of data that's been building for some time, and we have had this big flush of long-term data, which is why I decided to do this report that is going out five years. I named it the Soaring Twenties, even though we are not into the 2020s. Dot. Our 2020s, to some extent, are replicating the kind of language in the newspapers and limited newsreels they had at the time of the 1920s. Only instead of being the Roaring Twenties, we're going to have a Soaring Twenties. Cliff High also talks about a coming Bone Day buckle, Soaring Gold and Silver prices in 2018. The future of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, legal actions will be taken against the bad actors and governments in the deep state. Cliff High also predicts some fantastic levels of business failures. 2018 will be a good year for gold prices. Analysts to hear are doubts that the Federal Reserve will actually hike U.S. interest rates as much as policymakers think, leaving many analysts bullish on gold for 2018. They also cite potential for geopolitical flare-ups, improving physical demand in key buying nations India and China, and investment demand as a hedge against any correction in soaring stocks. Bears, meanwhile, cite a view that the U.S. economy will remain strong enough that Fed policymakers will in fact hike as much as they've hinted. I think 2018 is going to be a good year for gold, and it should shine bright in the new year, said Phil Flynn, senior analyst with Price Futures Group. Bart Malik, head of commodity strategy with TT Securities, told Kitco News that gold should benefit from a Federal Reserve that will take a very gentle approach to tightening monetary policy. Lower U.S. rates help gold, and vice versa, by reducing the so-called opportunity cost, or lost income from holding the non-yielding asset, as well as undercutting the U.S. dollar. Gold tends to move inversely to the greenback. We don't expect real rates to move up too much, Malik said. We expect a move in December and perhaps two moves in 2018. But we think there's a considerable risk that there will only be one more hike next year. By contrast, the so-called dot plot of individual policymakers shows they envision a hike in December plus three more next year. For now, TDS looks for gold to average around $1,313 an ounce next year, compared to an expectation of $1,257 for 2017. TDS sees gold averaging $1,325 in the fourth quarter of 2018. Malik looks for President Donald Trump's nominee for the next Fed leader, Jerome Powell, to largely carry out monetary policy in a manner similar to current Chair Janet Yellen, a fairly dovish tightening amid concerns about the lack of inflation in the U.S. Flynn looks for gold to average somewhere around $1,400 an ounce next year and perhaps hit $1,500. Macquarie, in a recent report, said it envisions gold hitting $1,400 in 2018 for the first time in five years on the end of U.S. economic outperformance, meaning a headwind for the U.S. dollar. Yes, the Fed will have to raise rates. Growth remains higher than trend, but this is becoming true elsewhere, the bank said. Crucially we think the dollar is more likely to weaken than strengthen and pre-2014 levels are perfectly achievable. And political risk factors? An unpopular president unable to match up to his domestic promises in facing complex and potentially unsolvable foreign problems, are also be in gold's favor. Conversely, as of early November, Robin Barr, metals analyst with Societe Generale, looks for a pullback to an $1,175 average in 2018 on a view that the Fed will retain some hawkishness and probably hike three more times. We do expect gold to trade lower over the course of 2018, which is predicated on U.S. monetary policy continuing to tighten, Barr said. We think that provides a headwind to gold at a time when there are better performance in industrial metals because of synchronized economic growth and lack of supplies going forward. But while Barr looked for lower gold prices, he also listed one potential factor that could end up helping the metal. Should much talked about U.S. tax cuts not materialize and boost the economy, this could make the Fed more dovish than otherwise might be the case. Stocks, cryptocurrencies, geopolitics and focused stocks and cryptocurrencies could end up supportive influences for gold. There is a certain amount of uneasiness in the stock market even as equities keep hitting record highs, with some fearing a big downward correction is on the horizon. If so, that could mean safe haven gold buying.
They stocks have been pricing in perfection, and I'm not sure that we're going to get a perfect environment for equities to keep going up, Malik said. Further, Flynn said, as stocks keep rising, gold becomes undervalued in comparison, which eventually can lead to buying of the metal. He said potential for improvement in overall commodities prices would mean price inflation that helps gold. Flynn also commented that gold may not only benefit from worries about currencies generally, but the Chicago Mercantile Exchange's plans to launch Bitcoin futures could help gold on spillover interest. The gold market is an alternative currency similar to Bitcoin, he said, later adding, if you're looking for an alternative currency, gold is going to benefit. Malik looks for improved demand out of India and China as their economies recover. Goldman Sachs has said demand in emerging market nations does best when incomes are rising and the populace can afford gold, whereas the metal tends to be bought by people in developed economies more as a safe haven during times of stress. Meanwhile, Barr cited a factor besides U.S. monetary policy that could end up hurting gold, what happens to interest rates in other nations. The European Central Bank and Bank of England have begun removing monetary accommodation, and Barr pointed out that Japan's economy is improving. Geopolitical factors come and go, such as the worries about war between the U.S. and North Korea, he said. The Middle East is continuing to simmer, with other terrorist threats around the globe, and that may provide some support from time to time, Barr said. Still, he said, the influence of geopolitics is more erratic in the sense that it ebbs and flows. Barr looks for central banks to remain net buyers of gold, although he said this may offer more of a cushioning effect for prices rather than a strong boost. He suspects that official sector demand will be less than during most of the past decade. How the silver price is trending now all was pretty quiet for the silver price as we approached the December funk meeting early last week. On Tuesday, December 12th, silver was trading at $15.73 at the New York Open. Then the U.S. dollar index, DXI, would start a morning rally that took it from 93.85 to 94.20 by midday, in anticipation of the Fed's rate hike. That sent silver down to $15.63. But traders would take some profits in the dollar, and silver bounced back slightly to close at $15.69. On Wednesday, silver was quiet in morning trading. It opened at $15.67, then rallied hard as the DXI dropped back below 94. Silver prices soared to $16.12 by 3 p.m. post-Fed statement, then retreated to close at $16.04. The DXI would reach 93.45 by 5 p.m. Don't miss, executive editor Bill Patalon just saw something on his precious metals charts he's only seen twice in 20 years. He calls it a Halley's Comet of Investing and it could lead to windfall profits. Read more. On Thursday, silver traders took profits. The metal opened at $16 even, then sold off as the dollar enjoyed a small bounce that boosted the index back up to 93.7 by mid-morning. That pushed silver down to a mid-morning low of $15.83. But then buyers took control and helped drive silver higher, to close at $15.86. Have a look at the dollar's action of the past trading week. As we entered Friday trading, the silver price got back its mojo and rallied again. But this time it would be despite the dollar, which also enjoyed a strong bounce. The DXI was at 93.50 around 7 a.m. comma but soon rallied to just shy of 94 at 5 p.m. and still, silver, which opened at $15.98, kept rising on balance to end the week at $16.05. On Monday, December 18th, the dollar had a mid-morning sell-off that took it from 93.7 to 93.40. But it quickly reversed and climbed back to reach 93.7 by the late afternoon. That didn't seem to bother silver prices at all. The gray metal opened at $16.06, then managed to spend most of the day above $16.10, finally closing at $16.13. Now that we've examined the recent silver price rally, here's how high I see the price of silver heading in 2018. Here's how high silver prices are headed in 2018, so the dollar is still holding up and trading around its 50-day moving average. Unless it surges from here, it's unlikely to do much to weigh on silver prices. 
Meanwhile, silver has enjoyed a strong bounce from its recent low near $15.75. That has caused both RC and MIC momentum indicators to turn up sharply. In mid-November, I became extremely bullish on silver stocks. Here's why. The silver stocks to silver ratio looked to be bottoming. Since then, it put in a strong reversal, and the momentum indicators have clearly confirmed this. And here's what happened to silver stocks. They look to have put in a bottom about three weeks later, just four trading days before the Fed's rate hike. In my view, silver stocks still remain your best contrarian trade right now. Although the bottom is likely in, there should be plenty of juice left in this trade, with $34.50, then $36 is the next likely targets for the Global X Silver Miners F NYSE, SIL. As for silver itself, I still see a strong chance for silver to reach the $17 to $17.50 range by year's end, then $20.50 in the first half. In the back half of 2018, I expect silver to keep climbing to the $22 to $24 range. About Money Morning, Money Morning gives you access to a team of 10 market experts with more than 250 years of combined investing experience, for free. Our experts who have appeared on Fox Business, CNBC, NPR, and Bloomberg, deliver daily investing tips and stock picks, provide analysis with actions to take, and answer your biggest market questions. Our goal is to help our millions of e-newsletter subscribers and moneymorning.com. Visitors become smarter, more confident investors. Disclaimer, copyright 2017 Money Morning and Money Mat Press. All rights reserved. Protected by copyright of the United States and international treaties. Any reproduction, copying, or redistribution, electronic or otherwise, including the World Wide Web, of content from this web page, in whole or in part, is strictly prohibited without the express written permission of Money Morning. 16 W. Madison St. Baltimore, MD, 21201. The post the silver price just jumped 2.5% and could soar another 50% in 2018 appeared first on Monday morning, we make investing profitable. Wall Street Examiner Disclosure, Lee Adler, the Wall Street Examiner reposts third-party content with the permission of the publisher. I am a contractor for Money Map Press, publisher of Money Morning, Sure Money, and other information products. I cure posts here on the basis of whether they represent an interesting and logical point of view that may or may not agree with my own views. Some of the content includes the original publisher's promotional messages. In some cases I receive promotional consideration on a contingent basis when paid subscriptions result. The opinions expressed in these reposts are not those of the Wall Street Examiner or Lee Adler, unless authored by me, under my byline. No endorsement of third-party content is either expressed or implied by posting the content. Do your own due diligence when considering the offerings of information providers. to largely carry out monetary policy in a manner similar to current Chair Janet Yellen, a fairly dovish tightening amid concerns about the lack of inflation in the U.S. Flynn looks for gold to average somewhere around $1,400 an ounce next year and perhaps hit $1,500. Macquarie, in a recent report, said it envisions gold hitting $1,400 in 2018 for the first time in five years on the end of U.S. economic outperformance, meaning a headwind for the U.S. dollar. Yes, the Fed will have to raise rates, growth remains higher than trend, but this is becoming true elsewhere, the bank said. 
Crucially, we think the dollar is more likely to weaken than strengthen, and pre-2014 levels are perfectly achievable. And political risk factors? An unpopular president unable to match up to his domestic promises in facing complex and potentially unsolvable foreign problems are also be in gold's favor. Conversely, as of early November, Robin Barr, metals analyst with Societe Generale, looks for a pullback to an $1,175 average in 2018 on a view that the Fed will retain some hawkishness and probably hike three more times. We do expect gold to trade lower over the course of 2018, which is predicated on U.S. monetary policy continuing to tighten, Barr said. We think that provides a headwind to gold at a time when there are better performance in industrial metals because of synchronized economic growth and lack of supplies going forward. But while Barr looked for lower gold prices, he also listed one potential factor that could end up helping the metal. Should much talked about U.S. tax cuts not materialize and boost the economy, this could make the Fed more dovish than otherwise might be the case. Stocks, cryptocurrencies, geopolitics and there's a really interesting set of data that's been building for some time, and we have had this big flush of long-term data, which is why I decided to do this report that is going out five years. I named it the Soaring Twenties, even though we are not into the 2020s. Dot. Our 2020s, to some extent, are replicating the kind of language in the newspapers and limited news reels they had at the time of the 1920s. Only instead of being the Roaring Twenties, we're going to have a Soaring Twenties. Cliff High also talks about a coming Bone Day Buckle, Soaring Gold and Silver Prices in 2018. The future of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. Legal actions will be taken against the bad actors and governments in the deep state. Cliff High also predicts some fantastic levels of business failures. 2018 will be a good year for gold prices. Analysts to hear are doubts that the Federal Reserve will actually hike U.S. interest rates as much as policymakers think, leaving many analysts bullish on gold for 2018. They also cite potential for geopolitical flare-ups improving physical demand in key buying nations India and China, and investment demand as a hedge against any correction in soaring stocks. Bears, meanwhile, cite a view that the U.S. economy will remain strong enough that Fed policymakers will in fact hike as much as they've hinted. I think 2018 is going to be a good year for gold, and it should shine bright in the new year, said Phil Flynn, senior analyst with Price Futures Group. Bart Malik head of commodity strategy with TT Securities, told Kitco News that gold should benefit from a Federal Reserve that will take a very gentle approach to tightening monetary policy. Lower U.S. rates help gold, and vice versa, by reducing the so-called opportunity cost, or lost income from holding the non-yielding asset, as well as undercutting the U.S. dollar. Gold tends to move inversely to the greenback. We don't expect real rates to move up too much, Malik said. We expect a move in December and perhaps two moves in 2018. But we think there's a considerable risk that there will only be one more hike next year. By contrast, the so-called dot plot of individual policymakers shows they envision a hike in December plus three more next year. For now, TDS looks for gold to average around $1,313 an ounce next year compared to an expectation of $1,257 for 2017. TDS sees gold averaging $1,325 in the fourth quarter of 2018. Malik looks for President Donald Trump's nominee for the next Fed leader, Jerome Powell.